Hello! Thank you guys so much for coming to this video today. This is going to be an awesome interview. This is the Cardano Aura. It's the podcast that I do about Cardano's use and utility. Anyone that's providing utility to the chain that's using Cardano that's adding value can come on this podcast and um, essentially, you know, show off what they're building. And today I have Occam Finance with me. How are you doing today, man? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Yeah, it's no problem. Today we're going to be talking a lot about DeFi. So if you could, I'd really appreciate it for because there's a lot of new people coming into cryptocurrency and some of them haven't really gone into the weeds yet. So I think the best way to start off this podcast, you know, because we're going to be talking a lot of DeFi today. What is DeFi? DeFi stands for decentralized finance. Essentially, it's just financial flows like any bank or financial intermediary has in the traditional world. But as the name decentralized says, it's without middlemen. So from a user standpoint, how can a user actually participate in this? And, you know, what benefits does that have to them over the traditional finance system? Yeah, so... All you need to have is basically a wallet um, and some uh, tokens or coins that have value. And then you can participate uh, in DeFi, whether it's getting um, loans against uh, your collateral uh, deposit, whether um, it's um, trading activity, uh, whether it's yield farming, which is a new way to sort of give liquidity or lock tokens in into a certain smart contract um, and then get incentivized uh, tokens for that action. And there's, there's much more things uh, coming and building, including insurance, etc. So basically the whole financial world could be or will be replaced in the near future by decentralized finance. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, if you guys have never interacted with this before, you know, the way that I have done so is through the Ethereum blockchain. And what it's like on there is if you've ever used the Roy wallet, uh, the Roy wallet is a wallet that's in the browser. And um, when you pull it up, you click it, uh, and then it'll just show a little tab down here. And that's essentially how you interact with Binance. You go to a normal website, or not Binance, uh, with DeFi. Uh, you essentially go to a normal website. Once you're on that website, you can see, you know, different options and there are different smart contracts that you can participate in and be paid rewards in for, for, for participating in. And then if you find one that you like and you can, like he said earlier, provide liquidity, you can essentially take your ADA, give it to a smart contract and it'll just be a nice little UI thing in the corner. Click submit. And that's eventually uh, where Cardano will be. You know, with your Roy wallet, you'll have these integration with these decentralized applications to where you just... Pull the Roy wallet down, interact with the website, provide ADA, and receive returns, um, maybe on top of your staking rewards if the protocol allows it. Because obviously they're going to have to pay you more than that 5.25%, you know, to make it viable. But um, So what is Occam? Occam, Occam is a suite of products that is building the ground for DeFi applications to happen on Cardano. So first we have... Occam Razor, that's a decentralized launch pad where we are going to bring in new developers or new projects that want to build something awesome on Cardano. Then we have Occam X, that's a decentralized exchange, a secondary market for ADA tokens to be traded against each other in a trustless way. And it has various improvements over DEXs that are out there currently. And to uh, round off, we also have the Oakham DAO, which is represented by the OCC token. The Oakham DAO um, has the goal to distribute the token as widely as possible so that then over time users can take over um, and have a vote in how the Oakham Finance Protocol should develop, uh, etc. So you guys are really doing a lot, you know, all three. We are, we are, and we think it's needed. Yeah, it is definitely needed, and, and you know, in the Cardano community, because you know we've kind of been waiting to have this ability to build for so long that we're very welcoming uh, of, of new individuals, especially ones that are building so much. So, uh, let's dive into your first platform. Um, can you explain that a little bit further? And then also, uh, do you think that there's a good place for that, even with something like Project Catalyst, where you know the protocol uh, Cardano 
right now has like five hundred million dollars in the treasury. You know that uh, ADA holders can vote uh, to give that to individuals. So uh, where is the place for this side of Occam? Yeah. So. Uh... Project Catalyst is awesome, and it should continue uh, the, the way it's run. Mm -hmm. um, on the other side, we see also a need for incubation, acceleration, and venture capital um, to be utilized to build things on uh, Cardano. And that's the site um, where uh, we can help with uh, Oakham Razor. Basically, what we're doing is um, we're doing a due diligence of a project. Um, we're screening the team, the, the quality um, of the code, uh, the viability of the business model. And when we think this adds value to Cardano, and will allow such a project uh, to go on Occam Razor uh, and raise funds. So it's, uh, is it a way of connecting institutions that have funds, you know, with individuals that, that need funds? And instead of it being a decentralized platform, it's, uh, it's more of a centralized way of connecting, you know, two different parties or... So right now, it's the Occam Association that does the due diligence. Um, the goal, of course, is that once the distribution of the OCC token is wide enough, that uh, the users uh, themselves with the OCC tokens can do that. Right now, the distribution um, is, is not enough of the OCC token, so that will take some time, um, similar as it has taken time for Cardano to become the most uh, decentralized uh, proof-of-stake network. Yeah. So we're working towards that and we have a big amount um, of liquidity mining incentives in our token pools, which we'll give out to users that uh, participate um, over the course of, of the next years. Awesome. So uh, on to the second part, and I, I like that you laid, the all, you laid out all three of them for me. I really appreciate that. So um, what... Are you guys trying to accomplish, you know, with the swap? Or are you just trying to give users the ability to, you know, obviously have decentralized swaps between, you know, native tokens on top of Cardano? Uh, most of what people know about is, you know, Uniswap or, or Pancake Swap. Uh, can you do a little bit of a comparison, maybe what you guys are going to do different or better or uh, something along Absolutely. those lines? Absolutely. Before I dive into the details, I would like to take a small step back and explain the road why um, we're here today. Yeah. So my, my background is in traditional finance and specifically digital assets for a long, long time. Um, I'm uh, running a company called uh, Scalable Solutions, which is a cloud provider to set up uh, a digital asset exchange. And we're running with that technology around 20 clients around the world, and we're processing about 10% of, of the global spot liquidity through this technology. And what we have see, been seeing um, for a year, two years, uh, et cetera, is that more and more liquidity moves to a uh, decentralized uh, exchange. And about nine months ago, uh, we decided that we need to understand this properly um, and uh, figure out if there's a future for decentralized finance. And eventually if decentralized finance or a decentralized exchange could replace um, the, the centralized counterparties uh, where obviously middlemen um, are making a, a good buck. And the conclusion is that um, this will happen, um, but at the same time, we've been seeing in the space um, that there is a lot of problems. First of all, the, the blockchains um, that have enabled this today with the smart contract capability um, have security issues, they have speed issues, they have uh, very high gas cost, which, which reduces the attractiveness of those decentralized exchanges basically down to a whale game. And our mission is to democratize this. Um, and we found there's no better blockchain um, than to build this on Cardano. And essentially what we've seen as well is now that uh, tokens um, are possible to issue uh, on Cardano, and now that uh, smart contracts are about to um, go live on, on Cardano as well, is that we see tremendous uh, potential here uh, to, to enable this. 
Um, and the Cardano blockchain is not only faster and, and cheaper in gas fees, it's also the most decentralized um, proof of stake blockchain, which has a tremendous value for me. There's other um, uh, blockchains currently that uh, yeah, see quite some adoption and quite some volume, but they are rather centralized uh, in order to uh, reduce the gas fees, etc. But for me, this is not a viable option for the future. If we do blockchain, we should do it right. And I believe with uh, Cardano, um, we, we have a right fit here. Uh, besides that, uh, with Cardano, um, you can basically have the identity on the chain. So it's also already prepared uh, for the future when a regulator um, starts to look at decentralized finance more critical. So all the patience and all the hard work that has been put um, into the, the Cardano blockchain to develop it um, are yeah, ready to be harnessed. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. And this is why we are here. And coming back to your original question, um, what are the improvements? So the blockchain part is, is basically covered uh, from what I've been saying, but what we see today in decentralized exchanges, for instance, with Uniswap, is that you have to uh, that you have a, a big issue with impermanent loss, um, that you might not get the price that you think you're getting because there's high slippage, etc. So, long story short, it's not efficient. Um, we have put together a team of Olympiad uh, winning medalists in mathematician uh, in mathematic competitions in order to improve those things. Um, so with our decentralized exchange, we have a couple of mathematical breakthroughs to improve those things. So one of those things, for instance, is that on Uniswap, you have to supply 50% of both tokens into one pool. Um, and if you have like a, a good asset and yeah, I'm sorry for the word, like a shit token. Don't worry um, about it. And, 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 and they sort of move in uh, unfavorable directions, you can lose a fortune. That's called uh, in, impermanent loss, right? And the way we address that is that, first of all, you have only to provide single-sided uh, liquidity. That's, that's one of the innovations. Um, on, the, on the second part, um, you don't have to put those single sides 50-50. We have similar to Balancer, which is another um, uh, decentralized uh, uh, pro decentralized exchange, another DEX protocol. We have uh, weighted pools, but even with the weighted pool, if it's 90 to five to 10 or or 95 to five or whatever the percentage is, they're still fixed. So there is still a problem. Um, what our algor algorithms can do is to make the weight dynamic. Um, and by that, we can basically create one very big uh, meta pool that can do cross swaps uh, within a pool. So on Uniswap, you can see like you have a pool for every pair, right? And that becomes very inefficient because on the big pools, 95% of the liquidity is just lying around and doing nothing, um, while uh, it would be probably be needed elsewhere to have a competitive price. So with the big meta pool that we have, you can do the cross swap um, and we will essentially use most of the capital that is in there in order to have efficient execution. I appreciate that explanation. And um, you know, that made a lot of sense. And I, I do see some value in, you know, being able to provide one token um, over having to provide both. You know, one of the issues I always ran into on Ethereum with liquidity pools and it's not going to be too much of an issue on Cardano because you can swap, you know, so cheaply and so quickly. Um, but, you know, if I want to provide liquidity to a pool, I have to take, you know, Ethereum and, you know, WBTC and then pay to swap it over. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty awful. What what advantages do you see uh, specifically with, you know, a, a swap like protocol? What advantages do you see with Cardano um, that will, you know, maybe allow this protocol to stand out among the rest, you know, among the Uniswap and the Pancake. Yeah, so right now with the Pancake swaps and the Uniswaps, etc., cetera, um, it's um, a place for, for whales. And if we can move this liquidity 
um, towards Cardano. We open it up for normal retail folks because they can afford uh, to transact um, on, on this uh, platform. Additionally, the Cardano um, chain is enterprise ready. So we have peer review, we have formal verification um, that we can do. And that's going to be like a different ball game. So what I see on top of this, that we're making it attractive for the small guy is also that institutions can come in um, and bring the real money. And that's going to create a, yeah, the, the financial market of the future. And we're, our mission at the end of the day is to replace um, the traditional financial markets. Okay. So let's get on to, you know, the last thing, the, the Dow. You know, um, sure. Can you explain that? You know, and then also essentially just answer the same questions. You know, uh, you know what benefits over existing DAOs, and then also is there really any um, specific Cardano things, maybe at the protocol layer, uh, that offers you some advantages over, you know, uh, existing, you know, uh, DAOs? Yeah, I mean, on on Cardano, um, everyone's already familiar uh, with uh, delegation, with voting, uh, etc. So um, those are going to be the, the, the core functions that uh, people can write up proposals and then can uh, go uh, and vote for them. And whatever's voted in um, is going to be uh, implemented. So that's it's a very good way to um, have users uh, participate uh, in, in the future um, and make sure that there is a, there's a consensus that, that something is built that the, the community wants. On top of that, um, there is um, yeah smart token economics for the OCC token. So um, every OCC holder can go and stake um, his tokens. And right now, the way it's implemented right now, is that um, with every IDO that happens, if you have a minimum worth of OCC of $2,000, um, you are um, systematically re rewarded um, of every IDO that happens um, in in form um, of uh, yeah. So, so do benefits. you have to stake those two thousand, the, essentially the two thousand dollars in tokens? Yes, you have to stake those. Yes, yes. And then when you say staking, um, you know, we Cardano people have a different idea of staking. When you say staking, do you have to provide the token to a smart contract? Or is it like Cardano staking where the, you know, the funds remain in your wallet? Yeah, so um, right now, and this is a, is a crucial point, is that um, we are, um, so we have a live product, right, um, with the Occam Razor. But as everyone in the Cardano community knows, um, smart contracts on Cardano are not yet there. Mm -hmm. So this is live on uh, Ethereum. Um, and there it's the case that you stake the tokens um, in a smart contract uh, that, that is audited, uh, et cetera. Um, and you then get back um, some, some uh, LP tokens. And uh, that's, that's the, the, the way the mechanism works. In okay. the future, um, when it's on Cardano, we'll then announce uh, how, how exactly this is going to work. And the token economics are always uh, work in progress. So we're always optimizing those, uh, et cetera. And there will also be uh, yeah, purpose-driven uh, stake pool incentives that we'll announce over the next coming months for ADA holders. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I was just curious about that, you know. Uh, because staking is a little bit different over here than it is elsewhere. And, you know, I kind of learned that more, more recently. That is true. Yeah. Um, so is that all you wanted? Is that, is, is that all you wanted to say about the Dow? Essentially? I felt like I cut you off a little bit. If not, you know, we can continue. No, I think for now, that's the information that, that is available uh, on the DAO. Um, of course, uh, the DAO will uh, develop. Um, that's, that's a work in progress. There's, there's many ideas um, that we'll eventually implement, um, but it would be wrong to um, announce something um, that has not been yet started uh, yeah. to be developed, etc. Yeah, so... Are you guys building all of these platforms? You know, right now they're obviously ERC twenty standard. Um, are you guys building right now? Uh, I think 
you know, with the Plutus Pioneers program, are you guys, do you have developers, you know, working in Plutus right now, uh, building out these protocols um, for Cardano? Yeah, so we're part of the Plutus Pioneer program. Um, our developers have uh, access there. Um, we have uh, relationships with uh, known uh, Plutus developers uh, in, in the space. Um, and uh, this is our core mission. All the funding we have raised is based off the prototypes we had built uh, on Ethereum and the mat uh, that is underlying them for the mission to make this ready uh, on, on Cardano. How, how are your engineers, uh, you know, liking it? You know, the Plutus Pioneer program is, is pretty new, you know, within the past month or so. Uh, do, you know, do they say that there's uh, any advantage? How do they feel about, you know, formal verification languages? What, what advantages do they see with formal verification languages over other languages like Solidity? Yeah, I mean, there is, there is uh, of course, uh, a, a great uh, positive sentiment um, around this. And important to understand is that uh, many of our developers have been working um, in uh, centralized finance uh, before. So they're already um, trained to do formal verification, et cetera, um, having been working in, in the financial space. And those um, who um, are moving over from Solidity um, towards Cardano, they obviously have a huge blockchain knowledge um, and, and they're curious to, to expand this to uh, another new blockchain. Um, and so far, the, the sentiment is positive. Um, there is, of course, here and there some challenge when the documentation um, is, isn't up to date, etc. Yeah, but I can attest that's, to that that's, as a that's, operator. Yeah, that's, that's part of the sucks. game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the only way to be first, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And and it's a steep learning curve, right, when the documentation isn't, uh, like, up to date. But for this, you also have, have a network uh, where you can ask questions, etc. cetera. Um, and as long as you point it in the right direction, um, yeah, it's possible to, to get it done. Yeah. Yeah, well, I appreciate that insight, you know, because not too many people have the insight on the Pioneer pro program, you know, essentially developers. So, And also the insight about people coming specifically from uh, a centralized finance background and how they've essentially used formal verification before. Because uh, most people in cryptocurrency, you don't, you don't really have that insight. No, they just go and want to deploy as fast as possible um, and worry later. And that's definitely not our attitude. And hopefully we'll never be in the Cardano community. Yeah. Um, so my next question is, are you guys going to go for catalyst funds? You know, we mentioned this earlier. There's $500 million up for grabs for people that yeah, are adding exactly. use and utility to the blockchain. Um, are you guys planning on going for those funds? So um, we have started nine months ago. Um, at the time, we were considering um, doing a uh, catalyst uh, proposal. Um, unfortunately, back then, um, the funds were not enough um, to develop a project of this magnitude. Yeah. So we decided to go uh, a different uh, route. And right now, um, we're um, solid um, in terms of funding. Um, and we have a commitment uh, towards um, our uh, long-term uh, investors, um, which include uh, some uh, yeah, uh, ADA holders. Uh, as well, and uh, will fulfill this uh, commitment, um, and yeah, go go this way. Um, I believe for the Cardano community to be successful, there should be um, a few ways to get into Cardano, and it shouldn't be um, one way only. Um, I think for Cardano to succeed, um, they need everyone uh, who builds amazing stuff. So you said there needs to be different ways for people to get into Cardano. Do you mean like as an investment or do you mean, you know, as a way to uh, build? For, for a developer to get started and to have food on the table um, every evening, to have a roof over his top and not worrying when he's building something great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that completely. I was just curious, you know, if, if you guys were also going to go for Catalyst funds as well. Um, so you mentioned ADA holders also have, you know, a, a piece of this. Is that from the IDO or is that from like the, you know, the initial uh, investors? 
So there, there's initial investors um, that are among uh, ADA holders, of course. Um, and then we have set aside uh, a very big um, part of the tokens for so-called uh, liquidity mining incentives. Um, those liquidity mining incentives will go a long way and uh, will make it worth for ADA holders uh, to participate in those and will make it worth for uh, people that already have OCC tokens to also participate in those uh, going forward. Always with the goal of uh, achieving a wide, fair distribution so people can contribute and get locked in uh, with our mission and uh, help us to succeed because we need everyone. So what percentage of the tokens are for, um, you know, people that provide liquidity? So it's uh, stated on our website, if you go to the FAQs um, under token distribution, um, out of the top of my head, it's somewhere close to 30% um, that, that is reserved for uh, liquidity mining uh, incentives, which is, uh, yeah, quite a big ballpark. Okay. Yeah. So can you tell us about the, so I, I'm not really much of a, a DeFi guy, you know, I, mm -hmm. I've kind of always been the Cardano guy. So I didn't really get to watch, you know, all of this come out on Ethereum. You know, this is kind of, you know, my first time seeing DeFi come out. It's my first time learning about all of this stuff. So um, you guys did, I think it was on Wednesday, an initial distribution offering. Is, did I, is that what it's called? IDO? I just guessed. Yeah, yeah that's, that's correct. Yes. So can you, you could can call you just... it initial distribution or initial DEX offering um, depends, but uh, yes, it was an ideal. Yeah. So for me, what is the difference between an IDO and an ICO? Is it like just the percentage of tokens allocated for the offering or is it just a change of term because of all of the, the dirty past of ICOs? Yeah, what's the difference? I have never participated in an ICO, uh, to, to be honest. That was uh, too crazy. So an IDO, um, the way I understand it, is hosted on a specific platform that ensures the quality. An ICO um, is, to my best knowledge, is just on a random website um, by a random team. Could even be anonymous. Um, but um, has no sort of due diligence uh, done, et cetera. Okay. Um, can you kind of explain to people, you know, if people were interested in, you know, if they were interested, I know it's already passed now, um, but can you kind of give, you know, the thought process, kind of the whole story behind the uh, initial IDO, you know, how people could have participated. Uh, also, you know, there's a countdown timer to it, the, uh, the Medium article. Um, can you just kind of essentially tell uh, that whole story for people that are interested in Occam and, you know, to ADA holders as well? Of course, of course. So the idea was to uh, make it fair uh, for, for people. So in order to make it fair, um, the idea was to um, put a countdown on the website, uh, give people time uh, to prepare and not have like the usual whitelisting procedure um, that other IDO platforms do, where you get a lot of uh, fake users um, that, that are potentially not real and you sort of bump up uh, whatever social media um, usage um, where then essentially is not much uh, of an active community because people just want to secure a spot with whatever fake accounts they, they can make. So the idea was to um, limit the information um, and say at time X, at date X, something is going to happen. Uh, be prepared. What we were not thinking is that um, the demand would be so crazy. Um, so there was basically no way for us uh, to, to calculate um, that uh, people would uh, yeah, want us so much. Um, that would, and that led to um, yeah something we haven't calculated for that the ICO was literally sold out in seconds, um, and as you've probably done transactions yourself, um, if something's full on the Ethereum blockchain, every other transaction that comes then later um, just fails, but you still end up paying uh, the gas fee. 
And that made uh, a few people angry. That is why we reacted as fast as possible um, to uh, provide the OCC token on the secondary market on uh, Uniswap so that people that wanted in still um, have a chance. And then what happened on Uniswap um, was was just uh, yeah beyond my imagination. Um, there was a trading volume of like almost sixty million dollars in in less than than twenty four hours. So the the entire token supply just got bought out. Um, and yeah, it was uh, on one side it was super nice to to see um, that uh, people want to be affiliated with our product and, and, and want to uh, take part with the OCC token. On the other side, um, we um, heavily underestimated um, the, the demand uh, for this. Um, but at, again, the idea was um, to um, showcase that we have built something, um, that, that it's working. And essentially, we as Oakham, uh, we're going to take this blow um, in order for new IDOs that are happening on our platform to have them much better streamlined. Yeah. So why why didn't you guys tell people that the end of the countdown was the start of the sale? You know, like, yeah, in order free in, and fair, like, you know, we yeah. kind of have to know it, it is coming. You know what I mean? For us all to be waiting for it, for us to have Ethereum ready, because, I mean, we're all ADA holders. We don't just have, you know, bags full of Ethereum laying around. We're like, you know, screw that shit coin, a lot of us think. So it's like, you know, if we have a countdown, we know this is going to be an ERC-20 token. You know, why weren't we told prior uh, to the countdown that this is actually what was happening in uh, the process, you know? Yeah, so the idea, again, was to, to make the same process available for everyone at the same time. Um, that was the idea to sort of have five days and then the announcement would come out and um, people who really want to participate would be ready. And th those who were less interested uh, wouldn't be ready. So, so that was the idea. But um, did you have like a, on the website, like a FAQ uh, or any information stating that at the end of the five days of this timer, um, this is what is going to happen. We're going to be, you know, testing out the site. We're going to be showing, you know, we have a working product. We're doing all of this stuff. Uh, was it ever mentioned on the site that at the end of this timer uh, that you could actually purchase these tokens? Or was at the end of the timer, the article was then released on how to do it? The, the, the article was released five minutes before um, the countdown was finished um, in order to have enough time for people to prepare. Okay. Okay, and you, you mentioned like a high trading volume on Uniswap. Like, um, how how many tokens were provided to the liquidity pool, uh, like for sale? To to Uniswap? Yeah, yeah. So roughly um, three and a half percent um, of the total supply uh, were circulating in the market um, right after the the IDO. Okay. And so another question I had for you is why, why choose, you know, the ERC 20 token instead of just, you know, going with the native token standard on Cardano? So we do have uh, Cardano tokens uh, issued. Um, and uh, as you know, like the, the registry um, isn't, or is finished now and is, is about to update. So th there's a few uh, limitations there. So it's showing the 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 yeah the wrong supply, etc. Um, you can read all that uh, in in the FAQ. And so today um, we have 100 million tokens uh, total supply. Uh, a very big amount of those tokens is uh, is is locked away and and will gradually unlock uh, over time. And we do have a uh, Ethereum to Cardano bridge and vice versa. That is a centralized uh, nature and is going to go live uh, on the exchange uh, bitcoin.com um, where you can then can basically deposit an ERC-20 um, OCC token or a ADA version of the token. And you can basically then then swap it. Um, so that's going to be on Bitcoin. Whatever blockchain. Yes, yes, exchangebitcoin.com. It's uh, it's one of the 
fast growing exchanges with a good reputation. Um, it's a, a nice exchange um, that uh, we partnered with. Of course, how long be... until you, you're able to do that? Because you do realize that's probably one of the first times that you can actually withdraw a native token uh, onto the Cardano blockchain from a centralized exchange. Yes, so that's then up to our partners. Uh, I hope this is going to be fast. So as soon as we have uh, confirmation, we'll, of course, uh, give you updates there. But the idea um, to, to make this bridge um, and essentially then hopefully implement it into other um, exchanges as well is basically to capture a lot of value for the Cardano blockchain. Because today, when you want to withdraw a um a token an ESC 20 based token you end up paying horrendous gas fees um and yeah sometimes you don't even withdraw the token because it's just too expensive right and taking this use case and enable this for token and coins in the future so that you can basically withdraw anything in a wrapped version to the Cardano blockchain and then use the OCMFI uh, DeFi tools uh, to go and hunt for yield or do something useful is, is a real killer use case. I mean, right now or over the, the last one and a half years, we have been seeing people doing yield farming and DeFi activities on Ethereum. And the last couple months, we have seen people moving over to, to Binance Smart Chain. And again yeah, here, please. I... Yes, exactly for the fees, but Binance Smart Chain right now is highly centralized. Mm -hmm. And I see a tremendous value in having a trustless blockchain that is by far the most decentralized proof of blockchain that is affordable with the fees and is neutral. So I see the potential that a bridge like this is going to be integrated in all of the relevant exchanges uh, going forward. And then people just withdraw to the Cardano blockchain. And I think this is a killer use case uh, to create serious adoption and growth for the Cardano ecosystem. Right now it's limited but it's a showcase and yeah no one knows better than the cardano community that good things take time yeah yeah for sure and and that's why i'm like i'm just curious about the erc20 token you know uh did you do 50 percent of the supply over there and 50 over here uh, uh no, no, why no. why start with erc20 and you know build this infrastructure out on mm -hmm. ethereum mm -hmm. instead of just so, you know because like we said you know Good things take time. You know, what, 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 what is the rush? Why do an ERC-20 token in the first place? Why build any of this out on Ethereum, uh, you know, when Cardano is almost here, you know? I appreciate the question. So the, there were two questions. How much is the supply? Did you do 50-50? So the supply is um, equal on, on both chains, but the bridge in order to move to the other side, to one of those two blockchains, or maybe more in the future, the bridge will lock in yeah. um, the token that you move. So in that way, it's guaranteed that the supply is always the same. So in order to go to the other side, you first need to lock the token um, on, on the other blockchain, and then you can withdraw it uh, towards the other one. So the supply is always going to be 100 million, but issued is a hundred million on, on both sides, but a hundred million is always going to be locked um, and can only be unlocked when something from the other side comes in um, in order to, to take it out. So, so that's the simplest way I can explain this uh, mechanism. Then the second question was why the rush? So as I said, our vision is to grow the Cardano blockchain. And we believe uh, that everyone should be uh, participating in this. And what we see today is that even despite the fees, Ethereum still has the biggest liquidity. And what we want to do is we want to capture this liquidity and we want to move it onto the Cardano blockchain. And um, I wouldn't say it's a rush, it's a, a business calculation um that our protocol gets much more adoption because we can open the floodgates from another chain and move the liquidity uh on, on cardano and so do you we have saw... a way to incentivize uh you know ethereum users exactly 
you know, because if, if, you, if you have an incentive for Ethereum users, then obviously they would want to do it on the Cardano protocol at, at a cheaper rate. I'm just curious of what those incentives That's are, you know, for Ethereum users. More security, cheaper gas fees. Um, but I mean, like on the, the, the Ethereum side of things, you know, on before, the Ethereum side of things. Yeah, because uh, today, a lot of them are ETH heads, right? A lot of them are like, uh, you know, screw Cardano, but they won't say screw another DeFi protocol. So what are the incentives on the Ethereum blockchain itself over, over other Ethereum protocols, you know, for this business, you know, calculation to work? Well, um, already today, um, we have done a lot of education about the Cardano ecosystem, given the reach we have from uh, the, the past activities we've been doing in, 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 the, in the blockchain space, right? And um, I tell you that outside of the Cardano community, there's a lot of um, uh, skeptics if this is ever going to work, um, if they're ever going to deliver, all, all those things I'm sure you're aware of. And when we talk to those people and we tell them we're going to do this now on Cardano, um, they start to change their mind. And we believe we can change um, those people uh, um, for good. So, so that is one reason. Then the, the other way, why would they move over um, is the OCC token um, is um, relatively new um, and it's just started its uh, price discovery. And if you compare what a Uniswap is worth today, then the OCC token is, is nowhere near there. Um, and there's going to be people um, who, um, when they believe in the vision, can see this grow. So it's financially potentially interesting um, to try it out. And as soon as they try it out, then the user experience is just much better. There's no reason for them uh, to go back. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, you know, speculation, you know, is the main incentive, you know, for other from other protocols before they I, go to I, Cardano. I, 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 I don't hope it's speculation. Um that that would be a, a false uh, statement. Um so I just said it should be better user experience, um, less gas fees and more security. Yeah, but that's on the, um, the Cardano side of things. Right. Yes. A better user experience, less transactions. So, but you said that the reason that you did the ERC twenty token uh, and did this was to attract other people in the Ethereum community. And then you know, once they see Occam, you know, oh, oh, well, we can use the same protocol on Cardano for for better and cheaper. But you know, there would have to be an incentive on the in the Ethereum side of things for them to see the value of Occam to then bring the people over to Cardano that would actually warrant the ERC twenty token because. Like I, I'm just, I'm not a DeFi guy. I'm not, I'm, I'm really nothing, right? I'm nobody. I'm a content creator. I don't look into the stuff that much, but um, from my perspective, I, I see everyone in the Cardano community so, so excited about people building on top of Cardano um, to where I, people will message me and they'll say, hey, hey, big pay, what do I invest in? What do I invest in? What tokens do I buy? Oh, LQ tokens. Well, where? Where can I get them? Where can I get them? Where can I get Bloom tokens? It's just this, this constant thing that needs to be satiated because they just made so much money off the ADA run. Um, and, and to me, what, what scares me about, you know, this, the IDO and about this, is just, you know, I got on Occam.fi and I went to Uniswap and, you know, it's trading for 1250 on there, you know, and I just, I don't see a logical reason to release an ERC 20 token first and then move it over to Cardano unless there's an incentive for Ethereum users. That's why I brought that back up. And, you know, I, like I just said, I, I don't know anything, but it's just the clicking the Uniswap and seeing those tokens for 1250. Uh, and then also, you know, you guys having prior funding that just left like a kind of a weird feeling in my tummy. You know what I mean? It, it made me feel uneasy. And, and that's the thing is I just want to say that to you, you know, vocally and not call you out and not accuse you of anything. But I want to tell you, you know, what that whole IDO, the feeling that that left with me, you know, as someone who was excited about Occam and, and was excited about everything that you guys are doing. You know, I scheduled this interview with you guys before uh, this even happened. But just selling those tokens at, at 1250 on Uniswap almost felt to me like you're trying to extract value from the Cardano community instead of bringing value to the Cardano community? 
I, I wouldn't say that this is the case because at the end of the day, the um, Oakham Association is a non-profit, right? Um, and if we look how uh, the Cardano uh, ecosystem evolved, um, it evolved through uh, massive funding. Uh, massive funding um, allows uh, people to build something. And we're talking about the funding of Cardano, um, which is a magnitude bigger. It's even on another planet uh, than the few bucks uh, that, that we have. So we have a long way to go. We have big technical challenges. We have hired a stellar team um, that needs to eat. So I don't think that um, there, there's something wrong with that um, to, uh, yeah, to hire a team um, and no, provide for them wrong with that and, and build that stuff. I mean, if you would say that uh, we have 100 million in our pocket and, and we are running away, then I would understand your feeling. Uh, but that's not the case. We're, we're a nonprofit organization. We're paying normal, decent uh, salaries for the developers. And we're on this mission uh, to create um, the, the, the Occam the Occam protocol um, and comparing to uh, the value a Uniswap or other protocols have, our market cap is, is still super small and that money is not la landing in my pocket or, or in, 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 in any of my team's pocket. Um, that money is governed by a Swiss-based uh, association. That Swiss-based association has an address that has rules and that money is going to be used for the only purpose to build this protocol uh, on, on all confinance. And if, if you feel uneasy, um, I can understand because there was a huge boom um, and a token price on the open market um, is defined by the demand. Yeah, um, by demand. But that's an open market, right? That's mm -hmm. not something we plan on, um, etc. Yeah, I just... You know, because of like me bringing up all the people, you know, that reach out to me, they just seem so gullible, you know, so in a way, you know, Cardano, because we are so new, we have to have an immune system, right? We have to, you know, look for things where people are trying to, you know, extract value from the people in, in this chain. And uh, just the ERC 20 thing is really what, what gave me that bad feeling. And, and you kept saying that, you know, you're doing, you kept mentioning that it needs to be fair for, for ADA holders, you know, for the Cardano community. So to me, what would have been fair for the Cardano community is if it wouldn't have been an ERC-20 token in the first place, and you could have purchased this with ADA, uh, if there would have been more timing. Uh, also, if there would have been, because it was only 200,000 tokens, you know, when uh, millions were tokens, millions of tokens were giving out to, you know, the initial investors. Um, and, and where only 200,000 tokens were sold. And it just, to me, it seems like those were sold to then, okay, now it can be on Uniswap and now the tokens can be sold for what, whatever will, someone's willing to pay for them. You know, so I just like, I don't see how this was, you know, fair for the Cardano community at all. You know, when, when you say your mission is to, you know, bring value to us, you know? Yeah, I mean, as, as I stated, we're uh, not done yet, right? So. We have many, 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 many more tokens in the liquidity mining pool um, that uh, we'll be giving out to users that uh, participate in our ecosystem. And that will be uh, a small drop of, of the tokens that are out now. So it's by far not too late. Let yeah. us do our job um, and uh, we'll see. Um, uh, and I'm convinced uh, that we're building value here for the Cardano community and that essentially or eventually um, will uh, turn uh, some people. Um, but on the other side, um, a, a project that satisfies 100% is probably not a successful project. Um, so you will that. always have critical people uh, of things that you're doing, specifically if you're super new. Um, and that's that's part um, of the crypto sector that we're in. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, having, you know, certain things like this and criticisms also, you know, do help you grow. Right. And, you know, if if you are coming in with good intentions uh, and it remains that way, 
uh, I, I think the Cardano community would be we would quickly welcome you back, you know, once those attention intentions are shown. Um, but, you know, I just I, I wanted to, you know, be upfront and, and open about, you know, how that how the IDO, you know, made me feel. And, you know, I also wanted to say thank you for coming on here today, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that uh, communicating this uh, to us. I mean, we can also see um, on the social channels um, that you might have not been uh, the only person feeling that way. So this was uh, the first uh, experiment um, of, of an IDO um, for uh, the Cardano community. Uh, we have uh, made a lot of learnings and uh, we are going to be ready um, for the next IDO uh, very soon, which uh, will add value to the Cardano ecosystem. Awesome. Awesome. And, and thank you so much. And, and thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions intricately. And um, you know, I'll go ahead and end it here. So if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please just leave a like on this, comment down below, uh, click the notification bell and click all. Uh, I'll also have some uh, some links to some more Occam stuff down below. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we close out? Well, thanks a lot for uh, having me. Thanks a lot for uh, yeah asking those questions. Uh, I hope we'll be in contact more often going forward that we can show uh, our intentions and our updates, what's going on. Uh, thank you for, for doing this for the Cardano community. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, and that's, you know, as... Um, as you guys do do more, feel free to reach out to me, you know, instead of just leaving it at this, like, hey, man, I, I didn't like this, you know, and you come back with a response. It's much better. I appreciate it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you have a good rest of your day.